say, you'll notice it's very, very dusty and dirty because it's been, the gear stripped on it about, uh, I think, three to four years ago. Uh, I allowed um, someone to, uh, to, to do a little bit of a, a job up here in my workshop while I was away. And when I came back, they said to me, uh, very sorry, but uh, we think we've broken your little mill. And indeed they had. <laughs> so anyway, we're about to uh, repair it, do something about it. And uh, so we'll start by removing the uh, just a plastic cap and undo it. Undoing this four little Allen Allen uh, screws here. So we'll undo those and have a look. Okay, so uh, I will be fast forwarding or speeding up some of the footage here because uh, otherwise you're going to get pretty bored trying to watch this. So we'll pick this up and put over here. Have a little look. Oh yes. Now you can see there the nice little plastic gear. The teeth are missing just there. This is a typical uh, fault with these uh, little mills. Uh, you 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 give it you make it work a little bit too hard, and uh, this is the first thing that'll go here. But I also suspect that uh, the the gears have gone inside there as well. So uh, we'll just go a little bit further into this. And okay, so we just wired the motor there, so it doesn't flop off and pull the wires out of it or something. Silly like that. That's, uh, oh, that's a bit tight. And actually, all you actually need to get this gear off, if it is damaged anyway, so you're not going to damage it anymore, it's just got a couple of screwdrivers. Incidentally, this screwdriver is older than me. <laughs> that was um, actually given to me by a, a, a dear old friend who's now passed away. Uh, and he was 94 when he, he died. And uh, he gave me this screwdriver. It's a little bit of trivia. Anyway, so you can, oh there you are, straight up like that. And it comes off the shaft, like that. And you can see that the gear is actually split through as well, right where the, right where, the, oh, there you go, is that, right where those teeth are missing, he's actually split through on the back side. And you'll notice that there's a, a, a keyway there, well, We'll get the key out now. And that's on the on the back here. Okay. So there's the keyway there, little keyway. Just pick it out. And it should just pop out, actually. A little bit of luck. There you go. It fell out of there very near. Um, if you were just replacing the gear, the gear, there's no reason to take this out. But um, we are doing a little bit more than taking, uh, rather replacing uh, the, the gears, because uh, I'm going to remove that shaft altogether and the, the gear train uh, in, inside it, because it becomes a damn nuisance. Uh, if you just put a belt drive on the top here, and you don't take that shaft out, uh, it can cause you tr trouble. Uh, because this is the gear select here, and it just rises and falls a, a, a gear train up inside, which uh, meshes with a, a two gears on the this shaft in here, from memory. Um, and what can happen with the vibration of the machine running is this uh, selector lever can actually move and engage those gears and uh, it can cause you some problems. Uh, uh, like I say, it, it, in fact, I think with this particular machine, 
uh, there's something going inside there as well. So, uh, yeah, oh, there, yeah, there you go. I think that's, that's supposed to be in gear and it's gone inside. I think the gears are stripped inside there as well because that shaft is now to stop moving. Look, okay, okay, that's now high speed. Uh, you can hear it go clonk, clonk. Yeah, hear it? So the gears I have stripped in there as well. So we put... Okay, so the next thing to do is to take this collar off here. Now, the easiest way to do that is... Let's see how tight it's going to be. So there's a, there's a little Allen grub screw there that you have to undo. That locks it onto the, onto the thread there. So we'll get him undone. Now the easiest way I know of undoing a collar like this without a, a purpose uh, uh, um, wrench is you get a brass drift like this and a, you don't have to have a big hammer. Now from memory I think this is probably a left hand thread. So it's going to have to be, you're going to have to go the direction of doing up to undo it. So here we go. We just put them on there like that. And just a decent, I think that might have gone. Yep. That shouldn't be very, should, let's hang on to this. Incidentally, keep all these parts because you're you're going to want them to put the kit together. Uh, I think we can actually do without that, but keep it all the same. I keep everything. You never know when you're going to need something like that. Because um, yeah, in actual fact, where this collar has gone on, and this is there where the uh, the hole is that you know you put the bar in to, to lock the shaft up when you want to uh, undo the draw bar. Um, that collar is going to be incorporated into the um, drive pulley that I'm going to machine up to uh, go on here. So uh, we won't actually require that. Another keyway in the back here, so just get a screwdriver. Just get on the tip of him. Just hook him out. So uh, now there's two, oh that's plastic, I know what that's plastic under there, there's two like dust collars now, so we're going to want to take this all the way out, so we'll take both of them off. So here's a piece of just a plastic dust collar. We'll put that in there, which then reveals the, the top bearing. So now we'll do the same for the underside. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to, what you have to do is um, give this a good belt in to get this shaft out, for, out from uh, this top bearing. It should push the bo bottom bearing out. Uh, with it. Uh, I'll be using the bearings again. Uh, there's no, I know there's nothing wrong with those. Um, but um, I, I need to get um, the, 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 the gear, this, this shaft and gear, uh, out from the inside of the, this cavity. And um, to do that I've got to get this out. I presume. <laughs> we'll find out whether I'm right or wrong in a few minutes. Um, but uh, to keep this head up, right? Just the, these uh, Sig uh, X2s are uh, equipped with a uh, like a stay, which you just bring up underneath the head there, lock him up. And he's not going to go anywhere. Now. now, the best method I have found to get any bearings out like this is get a good piece of oak like this, because then you're not going to damage the thread. Stick him on there and just give it a. Bit of persuasion. Yep, 
has come in, but I just broke my piece of wood. So I better go and get another piece. Okay, if, if oak is a little bit too um, soft, right, you can always use a little bit of aluminium. Coming down, I just got this bit of oak here now just to catch it if it uh, comes out a bit too quick. And all this is doing is protecting your, the, the thread from uh, any damage. Uh, now I can revert back to a bit of oak, I think. Just get this last bit out, just use a bit of a brass drift and just... There you go, there she is. shaft with bearing was and also of course there's the uh, the drive keyway um, there should be a plastic gear inside there as well which was on this shaft so we'll we'll just put this shaft aside because we're gonna put that back in oh and there he is there oh yeah I can see that the gears are stripped in there too so you get this top bearing out now So just take your time, there you go, and it'll pop out from there, okay, and that bearing is perfect, so we can use the bearings again, okay, let's have a look at, ooh, there's a mess in there, I'll bring you in for a little, little bit of a look at that. Okay, let's bring you in for a bit of a look in there. And you can see here there's a whole tooth missing there and he's split. So that means the gears inside there are gone as well, which I, I suspected. Now so those pair of gears there on if I just catch all of the gear select. Get this one out the way a bit. Maybe not. There we go. If I move that one out the way a little bit. And then move the gear select up. Ah, uh, well, that's all I can move it. Uh, hopefully, you can detect the second gear underneath there and that one there, which mesh with, with this. And there's a selector fork. See him moving in the background there. You see his selector fork there. Um, yeah, so that center shaft and that whole uh, center gear there has to be taken out. This white bigger gear here that you see, this one here that I'm moving around, that was on that that drive shaft uh, that 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 the um, most tapers in. You put your chuck in. Now this gear is going to remain. We're going to put him back on the shaft because um, that that is the actual spacer block, and uh, he'll be all right. Uh, we can keep him in there. But those two little bearings there, they got to come out. Now I'm not sure whether I can get them out through the top here. Hopefully I can. If I can't, I'm going to have to actually take this whole head off and split him from here and take him out through the back. I hope it's not going to come to that, but uh, uh, we'll see. Okay, we're on the underside of him, uh, on the underside of the, the head now. Uh, if I can get the light in the right position. There's a, on the bottom end of this shaft, there's a circlet there, so you just get some circlet pliers. Well, you can actually do this with a couple of small screwdrivers, but if you've got circlet pliers, sometimes it's easier. Yeah. 
probably should have my reading glasses on for this one. He's stuck. He's going to come, I think. What's he stuck in? Oh, he's stuck in there. Okay. So we'll just get that in there. Ease him out. There we go. He's out. A bit bent now, but he's out. And get a bit of a bit of oak. Stick just on there. Just give him a bit of a tap. That's it. He moves. So I know he's going to come out fairly easy. And uh, actually, I'll put you back at the top side so you can see him coming up through. Okay, get a bit of a punch now. Get him on the end of this shaft. There we go. One shaft out. I wonder if we can get that gear out now. So you should be able to get a pair of point nose pliers and catch out of the little fork. Pull that out. Ooh. Okay, uh, actually it's dropped into the back here, so just get a bit of wire in this case and fish it out. Here she comes. There you go, one gear. One well, slightly damaged gear. Ooh. A very damaged gear actually. Um, which is totally tainted. <laughs> and the selector fork. And any other particles that are in there. Here comes the selector fork. You need to take this one out as well. There's a selector fork. You need to take that out as well. So there it is. And any well, broken off teeth or anything that's left in there, if, if you can, if they're there. Oh, here we go. And here's the offending broken off tooth. Here's the offending gear. And don't forget to remove the fork as well. You don't want that floating around in there when you're... You're milling something because it'll, it'll lock it up pretty damn quick if it gets caught. So get out all the pieces that are left in there that you can. Um, it should be fairly easy as you just saw. Um, so now we're at a stage where we can actually put this back together. Um, and really it's just the reverse of what you, you, you just saw. Uh, it's just a matter of, uh, you don't necessarily have to have the keyway in there. I'd take the keyway out actually. Uh, that's not really necessary to have that in there. Um, it's, like I say, it's just the reverse. You put, put this up, back up through and um, tap in back up through there using a bit of wood or something, a bit, of, a bit of hardwood or a bit of aluminium because you do not want to damage uh, the, the, the metal surfaces here uh, or in, indeed the threads so uh, to avoid any damage um, use either hardwood or um, a piece of, piece of aluminium uh, soft material so you don't damage the threads or the, 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 any of the surfaces of the metal uh, don't forget that gear now, the one inside there, uh, the, the big gear on this shaft, that needs to stay in there because you're going to put him back on this shaft as you put the shaft in and uh, um, put everything back in, bearings, tap the bearing back in and um, then we can start measuring up, uh, measuring up the shaft, uh, measuring up um, <clears throat> how far the motor is going to be away from the shaft and uh, pick up all these bolt holes here and um, everything that's necessary 
to, uh, to be able to make a base plate uh, to hold a pivot point for the motor, to hold the plate for the motor on a pivot point, and then an adjustable area, uh, segmented uh, slot, um, curved slot. Uh, which all can be machined on a CNC rotor. It'll do it no problem at all. Provided you take it nice and, nice and slowly, steady, it'll do it. Um, and actually what I think I'll do is I'll, I'll actually put a... For those of you who, who don't have a damage gear inside here and uh, want to try and lock up this shaft uh, so the gears are in neutral full time, that's fine as well. I just say you know, sort of take it out from there. It's a fairly easy process. But for those of you who want to leave that shaft in there with those gears, to maybe put in at a different time, maybe convert it back to gear, I, I don't know. What I'll do is I'll put, um, I'll make a, 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 a hole or a recess for this shaft, for this shaft to actually go into um, for those of you who don't want to take this shaft out or find it too difficult or whatever. Um, I, we can do that as well. I think it's probably a good idea. And um, Okay, so we'll... Uh, I don't think it's really necessary for me to film me putting this back together. I think you, you've probably got the gist of things. Um, it's just the reverse of taking it apart. And... Um, We'll uh, skip now straight through to the uh, the um, the drawing up, and uh, oh, incidentally, I've got a new uh, uh, program too, SolidWorks. Um, so we'll probably sketch it up into SolidWorks and uh, make it all 3D and all nice and pretty, and uh, then put it into ArtCam and get ArtCam to uh, draw up the toolpaths for us and. Um, then we'll put it on onto the CNC machine and cut the aluminium parts out and assemble it all on here and that'll be done. And by that time, um, I should have taken delivery of my package from China of all the components, uh, the you know the um, uh, NEMA 23s, uh, oh, they're the high torque ones too. They're the um, 425 um, ounce inch. So um, I. They are fairly big for this machine, but uh, I'm going to have them uh, uh, direct coupled, uh, not geared down in any way. So it requires slightly higher torque. Um, those, quite frankly, the smaller ones probably will do the job, but I like to have it uh, designed very reliable with. Um, shall we say, a certain amount of, uh, you know, sort of, uh, um, I suppose, um, butch factor, <laughs> we'll call it. So, okay, from, I'll put this together then, and uh, then we'll start, the next video will, will be uh, measuring up and drawing up uh, the actual kit uh, to go on here, then the one after that, I think, will be, we'll machine the kit, and we'll put it on, and um, then the one after that, we'll, um, we'll start the conversion of the, uh, to make this into a CNC uh, machine. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the video today. And um, please, if you have, press like um, or subscribe to my channel. That's always a good thing. <laughs> and uh, on the bottom corner down there, uh, sometimes YouTube or Google, uh, put it up the top or down the bottom, but it's there's a little red box there somewhere. Uh, you press on that, that'll take you directly to my YouTube channel, uh, where there is um, oh, 128 or so videos that you have to choose from, and uh, I hope you enjoy some of them. So, from me now, it's bye for now. <laughs>